All right, so um, this is the uh, reference picture that uh, we'll be using for this demonstration, this tutorial. And uh, this is my picture. Uh, this is taken at um, Silver Falls, Silver Falls State Park near uh, Salem, Oregon. It's uh, central Oregon, not central Oregon, but kind of in the middle part of Oregon in the valley. Um, Silver Falls is a really cool area. There's uh, a lot of trails, a lot of hiking. You can do some camp in there. Um, it's a big site, so there's um, lots of parking. They do have a lodge there. They have a restaurant. Um, and like I said, a lot of trails. And I did the Trail of Ten Falls, and it's about an eight-mile loop. And this is the beginning of this, this, this hike I went on. Um, and I believe this is the South Falls. And so... Um, really like this picture. Um, I'm going to try to paint it exactly like it's composed here on the iPad. When I take pictures, I try to um, take them as I, as I would paint them. And so I have the waterfall fall here on this right side, right? And then we have this nice illuminated tree on the left side. So I got some good balance there. Um, we have some interesting light and shadow here in the foreground and this kind of this little this little lagoon or, or pond from the waterfall here. So this is nice, nice deep green color and got this little cliff side here that kind of rolls out. And so I thought this would be a fun scene to paint. Um, a lot of good elements, light and shadow and waterfall and, and interesting textures in the rock I think would be a fun thing to do. So that's what I'm gonna be looking at here and, and, and going through um, this painting. Right, and this is going to be 100% oil pastel, and these are my uh, pastels here. So um, I have several different sets. So I have the Crepaz Expressionist, right, and uh, that's this set right here. And this is a good hard oil pastel, um, but it's good quality. Um, and then over here, I have a mixture of three brands. I have uh, Sennelier, which are this is in the paper. And then I have Mungio and um, this is a Mungio. I take the papers off so they, they kind of all mix in together. Um, and then this is a Neo Pastel. So I have three sets, three brands in here and I have the Crepaz over here and I keep, I keep the Crepaz separate from the rest of them. And the reason why is these are quite a bit different than the rest of these guys. These are a little bit harder. Um, so not as creamy, not as soft. And this is what we're gonna start with. We're gonna start with Crepaz Expressionist. All right, and then the uh, surface I'm using is Ampersand Pastel Board. And it uh, looks like this right here. So Pastel Board made by Ampersand. And this is a 16 by 20. And uh, you can get a good look at that. Now you can get this off dickblick.com, jerry'sartorama.com. I'm sure there's some other websites out there. You can probably find it on Amazon. Um, and that's just, just these panels, really thin. It's kind of a, a board, but the surface is textured. Um, it's got a nice texture. It's hard for me to describe it. Um, you kind of just have to feel it. Um, but it is uh, smooth, but kind of feels like sandpaper almost. Um, but it's not abrasive. It's actually starting to become my favorite surface to work on. The only issue with it is it's kind of a spendy. So this stuff is a little bit expensive. I think um, this 16 by 20 cost me like 15 or 16 bucks per, per you know, for, for every one. Um, and so I kind of just get them here and there every once in a while, but I really love this stuff. And if you have the opportunity to, um, to use it, I'd highly recommend just to try it out, just to see what it's like. Um, and I highly recommend just in general to, um, to just try out different surfaces every once in a while, if you can, it really builds your skill level. If you try different surfaces. And I've learned that um, for myself. 
um, just by switching surfaces uh, that my uh, skill level seems to um, increase a little bit faster for me. Um, it kind of pushes you and, and um, in a way. So I'm kind of getting my easel set up here. All right, and um, we'll leave that where it is. All right, so let's look at our picture here and see, kind of see, maybe we can pick out some colors that we're gonna use to start off with. So definitely some greens, some browns, some lavenders, maybe some violets, like you can kind of see a little violet up in here, uh, blue, and so let's kind of pull some colors out. We're gonna definitely go some greens. All right, so this is Crepe Paws Expressionist. And uh, I took the wrappers off some of them, so I'll show you what it looks like with the wrapper on. So Crepe Paws Expressionist. This is a really good brand to work with, and I like it for the first layer. And that's what we're gonna be using it for, for the, the first couple layers. So let's get some more colors out. So there's some greens. This is a black, I'm not gonna use that right now. There's brown, let's go with the gray. I do have a gray in here somewhere. You can see I use gray quite a bit, so I only got these little pieces, but I think we can make that work. All right, and here's a uh, kind of a lighter green. So there's a couple pieces to start off with here. All right, so first things first is I'm just gonna study the picture a little bit and I have this cliff here, kind of starts up in this, um, this top of this corner, this top right corner and kind of swoops down and goes all the way across. All right, and we have the waterfall and we have this path. I don't know if you can see that, but there's this little path that comes behind the waterfall. All right, it's got a little fence there. Probably can see that now, there you go. So I wanna put that element in there. And then of course the, the shadows and the light and the water is really interesting to me. And that'll be fun to get in. But right now, let's try to just get in some of the basic elements here. So I'm gonna start off with just getting this piece right here. Okay, so let's take a, um, let's kind of take this gray. We'll start with this little gray piece. And I'm just gonna kind of make a mark where this, where the cliff is kind of coming down and, and swoops across. So here's my board, All right? And so you can see where it starts. Something like that. And it just kind of swoops down kind of just comes across like this. Okay, it doesn't have to be exact, just in general, just kind of where that's gonna be. Okay. So you can see I'm, I'm getting this, the top of this, this ledge here is what I'm um, kind of putting in, kind of indicating where that's going to be at. All right, and then uh, we have the waterfall itself, and it's kind of just coming down right at this bend. And it just kind of comes down, straight down. About right here. And it comes down and hits the water about right, right in this area, right there. You can see how I, it just comes straight down and then hits the water towards the bottom of the, I guess the bottom quarter of the, the image. So I try to make the same marks um, there. All right, and then I'm gonna switch it to a, a brown. This is a, just a regular brown, regular like a medium brown. This is still the crepaz. And um, I'm going to, uh, Kind of use it to kind of block in. All 
Now this is just first layer, so um, I'm not worried about exact color match at this point. I'm just really worried about kind of just blocking in the general shape of where things are going to be at. Um, and I like this brown here. Just different than the gray, it gives me a little bit different contrast. Um, just kind of just get that in really loose, really light. I'm just kind of dragging it very light. And just let the surface pick up the pastel, let it, let it pick it up. So I'm not really pressing down. Okay, I'm just kind of use this a little bit more. Um, you can see there's a lot of different colors in here, but I'm, right now I'm just going with the brown. I mean, and I could do this with a dark gray. I think a dark gray would have been fine also. Um, I just don't have a dark gray on me for the cray paws. So right now we're just gonna use this brown. Just to cover, you know, we're just doing our first cover. Now the crepe paws is a, is a hard oil pastel. The consistency is harder than the rest of mine. So I always start with the hardest ones and then uh, we layer the soft ones on top. So you don't want to start with the soft ones and then go with the hard ones. You don't, you don't really want to do that. It's, you're going to have trouble getting layers that way. But if you start with harder consistency and then move to the softer ones, that's how you get, that's how you get layers. So I'm just kind of scrubbing this brown in there. Okay. And I'm kind of focusing on this part right here. Okay. All right, so let's put the brown down for a second. Let's grab a uh, blue, nice sky blue color. And uh, we're going to kind of get some of that blue up in here. All right, so here's my blue. And I like to lay the sticks sideways. So that way you can do that. Um, that's why I take the papers off. Because you know, the papers get in the way if, you know, if you're trying, if you're using this technique. Okay, so this blue here is going to go up here, and it's a little strong right now, and that's okay. We can tone it down. But we know that the sky is going to be up here, so let's just go ahead and get that blue up in there. I'm going to come all the way to the edge. Okay. You can see, going for the scoop sky up there sky all right but this is a really strong blue and i'm going to try to tone that down a little bit so i'm going to grab a gray i'm going to go right over the top of that blue and that's going to really knock that blue so it's not so vibrant you know it's not so strong and i'm just taking this gray i'm going right over the top of that blue So just general block out of colors. And that's what I'm kind of just going for right now. So I'm not thinking about details, just thinking about just general composition, general blocking out. All right. Now, what else have we got here? So we got this nice tree here. So let's find a green. I'm gonna go darker. I'm going to go darker than what it suggests here. I find that going from dark to light on trees um, is actually easier for me. So I'm going to take this green. I'm just going to block out. I'm just going to block out where that tree is. So all the same color green right now. 
kind of scrub that in there. Right? So you get this tree kind of comes down. Something like that. Okay? So we only use, you know, four colors, a brown, green, and we've got two colors up in here. All right, let's get back to um, this brown. And um, let's kind of do the lower part of the, the cliff side here. So um, I'm just going to take this brown and kind of continue with it. There's my waterfall. I'm just gonna kind of skip over that a little bit just to kind of tell me where it is. And I'm starting to define where that water is gonna sit. Cause it's kind of in this little bowl. If you look at it here, there's kind of this bowl shape. All right, so it sits in this little bowl kind of shape. Try to follow the landscape as close as I can, close as I can get. All right. So that's that brown, and uh, I'm going to bring in some green here to indicate some of the green that's on this portion right here. You can see there's a lot of. Uh, a lot of plants, you know, there's a lot of water, a lot of mist. So a lot of this uh, cliff, cliff side, especially on the lower part, was just covered in plants. Um, so I'm gonna just use this green. I'm just gonna just put a little green down there. Just a rough indication of where, where that's going to be. This is the same green I used over here. Let's see, it kind of comes up a little bit. Kind of comes up like that. All right. Now we've got the water here. You can see how dark it is on the picture. Um, so what we're probably gonna do here is uh, probably a green and a brown together. And I just don't have any other darker values here at the moment. Um, except I do have, ooh, that's a dark, dark brown. That's a sepia. I haven't used it yet. So let's go ahead and take the papers off. So it looks black. It's not black, it's sepia. All right, so it's a nice dark value, and that's that's the most important thing right now. So I'm going to define my darks with this nice dark brown color. I really like it. And we'll just get into where this water is. Water kind of comes back, forms this little bowl shape down here. Try to get as close to this edge as I can um, when I'm doing this. All right, so there's the dark. And let's keep going with this dark. I'm gonna kinda keep defining some of the dark areas that I'm seeing on the picture here. And you can see where the dark areas are, right? You can see where that path, that's just a little bit darker. And underneath here, it's a little darker. So I'm gonna start getting in the dark areas. And I'm just gonna use the same sepia that I was using down here in the water. And just kind of, just loose. Just kind of, in general, where some of the darks are gonna be. 
Okay, now this path, um, it's got a little bit of darkness where the path goes, so I'm going to go ahead and get this path in there. Kind of comes up like that, and then it kind of comes up like there, and then continues back. You can see how it kind of loops, loops there. All right, get some dark in there. So it's just dark and light values. Right now I'm working on the darks. And up in here, we do have some dark here on the underneath side of this cliff as it's kind of hanging over. It creates a dark spot underneath here. That's what we're gonna get in right there. My waterfall is going to be coming down right about here, right? Right about there. So, just got to remember that. Random darks in there. A little bit more dark down in there. This is going to be a tree, so there's going to be some tree stumps and branches and things, so I'm just gonna loosely get that in there real quick. All right, so this dark sepia is gonna be a good choice here. You can see as I use it, um, it starts to create these edges here, right? These little sharp edges, and that's how I get details, by just using these edges. So people say, well, how do you get details with oil pastels? Well, that's how I do it. It's basically the way I'm using the oil pastel, you know, as I drag it across the surface, it creates these edges that are good for details. So that's another reason why I like to take the papers off um, for that reason right there. All right. You can see uh, the scene is uh, kind of taking shape. I'm just kind of working the very first layer here, defining composition, defining darks, kind of defining where things are going to be at. Okay, so that's that sepia. And then uh, I'm going to bring a little blue to the water, maybe actually. Actually, it's a little bit more green than it is blue. So I'm going to take this green, which is the same green I used up here, and I'm just going to go over the, over the dark water with the green because that water does have a green tint to it. It's a nice, dark, deep green color. So I'm going to get these two colors working together here. And just get that green over the top. Okay. All right. And uh, we're going to take this ochre and try to do the light where the light hits the water, it changes the color of the water to this uh, light brown color here. So we'll, we'll indicate that for right now with this ochre and uh, just kind of get that in there. Just generally where that light's hitting is uh, what I'm concerned about at the moment. We're gonna do a lot of layers and this is just our first layer, all right? So I don't need to be so concerned about details at this stage, right? This stage is all about just worrying about composition, large shapes, and just general color. Um, at this stage, the details come later. But right now, we're just worried about just general shape and composition. Okay, so there's a little light that's coming through. Okay, so that was this uh, ochre color. I'm still using the cray paws. Um, let's bring out a couple more colors here. So there's a light 
a lighter brown than the sepia. And I'm gonna go over that ochre, kind of tone it down a little bit. So it's not so strong, you know, it's not such a strong yellow. Okay. And I'm gonna bring this peach. It's kind of a flesh color, I call it a peach. And uh, we're gonna go over then. So now we got three colors just in this spot right here. And this will tone it to the exact tone I think I'm looking for. Remember, I'm looking, I'm working on this little light space right here. All right, so let's just get some of that color down in there. Oop. Almost lost my uh, board. Happens sometimes. All right. Okay. And then, um, this is a lighter green. So this is the green I've been using. And uh, I think I'm gonna bring in some lighter greens. Here's a different kind of green. And then here's this one. To kind of get a little bit more into this tree, because right now I'm just using this one color here. So I'm just gonna kind of bring this lighter green in. Kind of work in some of this into this tree. Okay. And here's even a lighter green because you can see how how strong that sunlight is. So we're going to bring in even a lighter green at the edge here of this tree. All right. So just be loose. It's not about details, it's just about blocking things out. You can kind of see how that changed right here. You can see the dark underneath, the dark underneath. And so let's go back and reinforce more of that dark. I'm using that sepia brown, that sepia dark brown that I have. Kind of some loose tree trunks, branches, things like that. Just kind of get that in there. It doesn't have to be exact. You just want indication of it. <clears throat> There's that strong shadow. You can see the strong shadow there. And that's going to come right here. And kind of just <clears throat> creates these interesting patterns in the water down here. All right. All right, it is uh, coming along. Let's take this uh, peach, what I like to call peach. Right, we used it down here, but we're gonna go to the top of this cliff because the light, <clears throat> the light kind of lights up this edge here as it's coming from the, from the right down to the left, it, it touches this top edge up in here. Kind of acts like a backlight almost. All right, you get an indication of that with this uh, peach. And uh, reinforce the light down on the water. So I know there's a lot of rocks and there's a little beach down here and 
you know, but we're not worried about that right now. Right now, it's just the general color of the area is what I'm worried about, or what I'm thinking about. Kind of just defining some light spots. Okay. Going in with the uh, darker color again. Get a little darker down at the base of that tree. And in the middle part of the tree, the middle section of the tree is definitely darker. And it gets lighter as you get to the edge, right? Right? Let's bring in this dark up in here again. Kind of reinforce the dark up in that area. <clears throat> you know, just kind of different little dark crevices in the cliff side here. So just kind of loosely just get that in. And then there's the uh, little path that kind of walks you behind the waterfall. And then down here, it's dark. Down here where the water falls, meeting the, the water right here, you can see the darkness right there. So that's what I'm gonna go for right there. Starting to take shape. Okay, so let's bring back this gray and kind of get my waterfall back here. So the water comes down right here and just come straight down, straight down like that. Straight down, boom. All right, and where it hits the water, creates this little splash right at the surface of the water. You can see there, a little splash just right there. idea of the waterfall. All right. Okay, now we have some trees. You can see some trees back here. Nice, big, tall, probably Douglas firs mostly, I would guess. This part of Oregon. So I'm going to go ahead and um, use this uh, kind of a, it's just a light green. There's a um, little bit of gray in it. It's just, it's not the strong greens. Okay. So you don't want to use the same greens here, back here. These trees are further away, so you want to have a different green. Um, so I'm just going to put in these trees, indication of where those are going to be at, back in here. You can see how I create, I first, what I, trees, I first go up vertical like this, and then I fan it out. I like that. Okay. Let's see, now we've got to leave some sky here, so I'm not going to make it all trees up here, but um, gotta leave some space for some sky. Make the trees different height so they're not all the same. Alright, just kind of a quick cure. some trees up in there okay that's pretty good it's good enough I mean it it tells me where they are just fine 
obviously we're gonna put a lot more a lot more d details and more values back in there but for right now that works good enough okay I'm gonna bring some pink I'm gonna bring some kind of this you can kind of see it in the, in the cliffside here um, it's kind of got a violet lavendery kind of um, color in, into the cliff so I'm just gonna use this pink I'm just gonna go right over the top of the brown very loose Just kind of scrub that in there a little bit. Bring a little warmth to the cliff from the light that's kind of coming through the scene here. Kind of in different spots here, maybe even down here indicate the shore of this little lagoon. This little pond here from the water. So quick where that edge is going to be. You can see that the uh, pink really brings in some nice warmth, some color to that brown. Nice, looking good, okay. So let's bring a little bit more of a, a lighter green. So I'm gonna go with this one. And just, just kind of random marks. Just get the impression of that area. You can see every time I go back and I add more color, you can see how the scene just starts to, just starts to come alive, you know, it just kinda, kinda happens. Uh, but these first stages here, it's just about blocking in color. So some green plants down in here. Here's that dark sepia, I'm gonna bring that back. Nice and dark. I want my darks to be nice and dark, and my lights to be nice and light. So it's just a constant readjust of these values over and over and over until I get it exactly how I want it. Um, so it's not about details in the beginning. It's really about controlling the color, your lights and your darks, just kind of general composition of where things will be at. Some more branches, a little bit more dark here at the edge of the tree. Okay, so we've got, a, we've got some good layers here going. And uh, it's starting to take shape. And let's see here. Now we have this foreground ledge here that's got some plants. And I'm wondering if I should put that in or just leave it out. So let's think about that. Maybe I'll, I'll, I'll kind of put it in here, just very light, but I, end up might, um, I might end up leaving this out. Because for painting, it might not really make sense to have something down right here. Picture is different, but for a painting, it might not really work out. Let's just see what it looks like and see if it creates a distraction. If it creates a distraction, then I'll probably leave, we'll leave it out. And uh, I gotta get it right up to that edge, so. Okay. There's the water. All right. Let's take a look at this. All right, so it's not exact to the picture, right? You can see the picture of how the waterfall is more on the right side here. And you can see on my painting, I have it a little bit more central 
here, which is fine. I could have put the waterfall right here. But this is good. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna change it. Alright, so we got a first layer here. Here's my colors. Alright, so next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna blend this out. Um, let's add a little bit more dark up in here. Just don't have enough uh, oil pastel up in this area. I'll bring a little bit lighter brown also to help. Just add more color. Dark again. Just random areas. Okay. I think I got enough in that tree. All right. Okay, so there it is. Now we're gonna bring in oil. So this stick, this stick right here is made by Sennelier and I'll show you a brand new one. This is a brand new one. Um, this is a grand size and it's made by Sennelier and the number on it is number 221. So this is an oil pastel stick that has no color in it. It's just, um, it's just oil and wax. So it's a colorless oil pastel stick. And it's used uh, to help blend, to help mix color. And so that's what I'm using here. So I don't use solvents or mineral spirits when I use oil pastel. Instead, I use this. And I like to get the grand size because I use a lot of it. All right, so there's my grand. They can see this one's almost done with. So basically what you do is you just take this and you just apply it to the surface. And I'm just scrubbing in more oil and wax to the surface here. I'm just gonna go over the entire thing. This is gonna help me blend these colors and help me cover the surface. So it helps you extend out and cover, right? Because one of the big one of the big challenges with oil pastel is is covering your paper, right? You get a lot of holes, you can see a lot of paper coming through. Right? So blending and mixing color, this makes it easier. And it gets really dirty, you can see. It's just getting dirty, so I'm gonna clean it up a little. And I just use these um, these wipes, these Clorox wipes, um, and it does just a fine job of cleaning it up. Okay, and just add more oil. And you want to be, I'm pretty liberal with it. I add I add a lot to the surface because it just makes it, it just makes blending and, e and um, mixing the color just so much easier. All right. You get the idea, right? Now, if you don't have this and you wanna blend or you wanna extend color out, you can use solvents mineral spirits, uh, turpenoid, turpentine. Basically the stuff you use for oil painting, you can use for oil pastel and it works just fine. Allows you to um, spread the color out, blend, cover your paper or your surface. Just makes life easier for you. Um, and I used to use solvents quite a bit. I've, I've gotten away from solvents because I found this works just as well. And what I like about it is I don't have cleanup. I mean, I don't have to clean a brush. I don't have any liquids I have to deal with. This is my solvent. This is my mineral spirit, my terpenoid, terpenoid. This is what I use instead. So you can see how much I put on the surface here. And this is 16 by 20. So it's uh, 16 inches here, 20 inches going across. 
like to uh, work a little large. This is considered a large for oil pastel, in my opinion. Uh, 16 by 20, 18 by 24, um, and even larger, 22 by 28. I'm starting to like working on the bigger sizes here. So I'm still just scrubbing that oil in. Just making sure I just get a nice good coverage over the surface here. And just add a lot of oil to the surface. And clean it up when I go up into the sky. I don't want to bring a lot of brown up in here. A little bit of brown's okay, but try to keep the colors clean. All right, I think that's good. So if you haven't ever used the, the, the blender stick, this oil pastel stick that's made by Sunny Lear, I would, I would give it a try. You might like what you can do with it. It might give you some more options you know, different look. I really like it. It took me a little bit to get used to. Um, it took me a few paintings to figure out when to use it, how much to use it, you know. So there's a little bit of learning curve, but once you've figured it out, I think you'll, I think you'll enjoy it. Especially if you're using mineral spirits or solvents right now. You might wanna try that, um, this stick here instead of that. All right, so I'm gonna clean my hands here.